When I started out, I made all the mistakes. And if I was start over engineering again, how would I do it? My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. Now we'll start off with career advice. Most people, when they're going through the university career, they dream of being in those big firms. They do impressive projects and you can see they can change the skyline of the world. When you're just starting out, you need a lot of repetition in your career. So you wanna make sure that you're starting on smaller projects. Smaller projects means that you get more repetitious and get to have a bigger expansion of different types of problems that you need to solve. So small engineering firms is really where I would recommend that you start your career. And luckily for me, that's where I cut my teeth as an engineer. A lot of the time those bigger projects do have more complex solutions and you haven't been exposed to them yet. So you won't get to be able to design the more complex areas. And in the end, small projects are just as hard as bigger projects, if not harder sometimes. Because not only do you have a problem that you need to be solved, you also have greater constraints on cost. So this will give you a more well-rounded experience, making you a better engineer in the long run. The one thing you do need to realize when you do start at that small firm, it's only a stepping stone to your next career move. But you also wanna make sure that you don't stay there for too long. When you stop learning, you need to move on. But this also leads to the next part of the problem. You don't wanna just be chasing that money. Money is great, yes, it's important, but your learning experience is more important than your ability to earn money, especially when you're just starting out. That money will come later. Now, just because you're not focusing on the money doesn't mean that you should get walked over or underpaid for what you're doing you should be investing in yourself. So looking at different organizations that you can sign up to, such as Engineers Australia, iStruck D, or even the Concrete Institute, they all have different benefits that will help you improve your career, making sure you're reading through those different magazines. Now, some aspects the company may pay for you, but sometimes it's better for you to also pay for yourself and go to different seminars as well, as it's in your own best interest to make sure you're improving over time. How about engineering? Engineering is extremely important, especially when you're in your career. It's something that you need to be good at as it's what you're actually getting paid to do. You should start off on looking at structural mechanics and how buildings actually behave and how to break them down complex problems into simple solutions. You think about engineers back in the past when they were working on big sketchboards, they didn't have the fancy softwares that we have today. They had to break down those complex problems into simple solutions to make sure they can design it. And engineers, really get paid for their problem solving abilities. So applying their knowledge of structural mechanics and solving specific problems such as building design. Don't get annoyed at different constraints that the architect throws at you. Treat it as a challenge. Challenge. Challenge accepted. And by more truly understanding about what problems the architect is having and how different aspects are important to them, you may be able to come up with better solutions applying your engineering knowledge to come up with a solution that also solves their problem as well. So problem solving is key. It's not something that should be frowned upon, but something that you should encourage and something that should be really enjoyable. Codes are probably one of the most important things. They're really hard to read, but you need to make sure you will thoroughly understand the codes and how to apply them properly. As you need to break down those complex ideas, but design them for the certain aspects in the code that you need to apply it to. It's not just focusing on specific aspects of the code, but knowing the whole code from front to back. So there's a lot of reading here. Another thing you need to be important is not just focus on your local codes as well, as sometimes they might miss certain aspects and there's no way of designing for them in your local area. But also looking out for such things as Eurocode or ACI as they approach problems differently. Codes are really there only as a guidance and should not be solely relied upon. You've got to use your engineering judgment. There is no argument to say, because I applied the code correctly, therefore my design is okay. And because it had a failure, it's not my fault. If you should have designed a building for a certain aspect and you missed it through engineering judgment, so don't go out and be a code warrior, but truly understand the structural mechanics behind it. Communication is one thing that I lacked in my career that I didn't focus on early enough or something that I didn't put a much sway in. However, everything we do as engineers is communication. So it's important that your communication skills are the best. You need to make sure you're explaining complex ideas to people that don't have the same knowledge as you. If you do have a written communication, especially in email, sometimes it's better to also follow it up with a call to make sure that your intent has come across correctly. I was no good at proofreading. I'd read something and miss many aspects of what had actually been written where on Word, you can get it to play back to you. Put your headphones on and listen to what has actually been said. And through listening, you're about to improve what was actually written to make sure that your intent has come across correctly. And some books that I would recommend that you pick up in these areas to help improve your soft skills and communication skills, making sure you read through these books from front to back and truly understand the learnings that they're trying to impart for you. 
that will be one of the most game changing areas and help you improve your career beyond measure. Now, something that I severely regret is not focusing on my learning and improving my engineering abilities early enough. Learning is something that you need to bring to any engineering career. This means that you will potentially need to give up some of those game times, Netflix, but in the end, you'll make sure that you will enjoy it more. It'll make your engineering easier, get to work on more complex designs and help progress your career. So making sure you're scheduling most of your week to being some form of learning, whether that's trying to improve your communication skills, your engineering skills, we're learning how to use software. Now that we've known about where we should focus our engineering career in, I've got this one simple thing that you probably didn't know about engineering that will make your design so much easier and so much more efficient. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. Either you become a YouTube member or support me through Patreon. Without supporting my YouTube or Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.